Welcome to Viking Preparedness. I am Pastor Joe Fox. It's early morning, so excuse me. <sighs> Y'all bless coffee. <laughs> hey, uh, today I want to talk to you about a couple things. And later on in this video, I'm going to ask you to do two things. And many people find them difficult to do, but I assure you, you can do them. So let's get on with it. Um, Americans have, uh, surprisingly, you know, not when you look at the way we were formed and became a nation, uh, but we have developed as a people an entitlement mentality. You owe me, right? Or I'm just entitled to it. You know, it's just because I am, therefore I, I get it. I deserve it. Um, no, you don't. <laughs> and this has seeped over into even the prepper and survivalist community. You know, those of us who consider ourselves, you know, we're trying to be self-sufficient or, you know, not dependent on the system or the man and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Man, that mentality is still there. And uh, we're going somewhere with this. <clears throat> we were playing this game, Conflicted. I have a video on it uh, at Shofar Mountain. We played it a couple times. We, we learned about the game from Southern Prepper 1. And uh, it's basically a scenario-based game and, and it asks you questions. And you have to say, you know, what if, blah, blah, blah. I love what if questions. Some people are really uncomfortable being put on the, on the dime to answer a question. But one of the questions was, uh, given a grid down, you know, Tiawaki, SHTF situation, um, they kind of framed it like um, you're on your own for whatever reason. You don't have any supplies anymore. And uh, you come across a survival group. And this group is well organized and, and they're doing well. And um, if you don't join a group, you're going to die. And, but this group doesn't take just everybody. And so they say, hey, um, why should we take you? And then you have to explain in the game why, why a survival group would take you. And so my wife, who I love dearly, you know, I've been married forever. Um, and I sometimes take her for granted. Um, she starts lifting, listing off her skill sets. And it was like, you know, I'm an EMT, I'm an NRA certified rifle instructor. Um, I've homeschooled children extremely successfully. I can identify wild plants. I can garden well. Uh, I cook well. You know, ganung, I can take care of all these critters from birth through illness and sickness, dun, 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 dun. you know, with experience. You know, I mean, I have had, ex she has had experience in all these things. She's a firefighter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just things, right? Some things I don't want to talk about here. But I was like, wow, I'd take her into my group, <laughs> even if she wasn't my wife, right? <laughs> but it's amazing the number of people who think they're just going to show up and join some, you know, survivalist group, mutual assistance group, team, tribe, you know, whatever, just because they are. You know, you just got to take me. Well, why should we take you? Because I'm a person. You need to take me. Here's the reality. In the kind of situation we're talking about, a grid down situation, you know, caused by, you know, a variety of means, um, resources are not going to be abundant. They're not going to be um, continually coming down the pike. You're not going to be able to go to the grocery store and get more groceries. And, and so people are going to have a limited amount of food just from the get-go, not just limited amount of food, limited amount of toilet paper, limited amount of sanitation facilities, limited amount of water, yada, 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 yada. And so before a group that's already functioning takes somebody in, they have to weigh the cost-benefit analysis. I mean, you know, people hate that. It's like, ah, oh. but it's true. They're, they're going to do that, and they're going to say, why should we take you in? Are we better for taking you in or not? Um, and a lot of people assume um, a lot of y'all out there assume that you're going to be taken in just because you are who you are. Um, and I'm telling you, it, it might not necessarily be so. Um, so the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is this. Do a real self-assessment. You know, and this will take time. You know, look in the mirror. Take a good look at the mirror in yourself. But ask yourself, and, and maybe spend some time on it, you know, like a week, you know, periods of time over a week, and start, start a little notebook or a piece of paper or something, and start writing down uh, all the benefits you would provide uh, to a group uh, in a survival-type situation. What do you bring to the table? Right? I'll probably title this video that. What do you bring to the table? Well, I can do most anything. Mm -mm. All right, next. What can you do? You know, what really can you do? Well, I'm willing to do any kind of work. Yeah, well, we've got 
people like that a dime a dozen, man, and I only have so many extra buckets of wheat back here. So next, you know, what can you do? What do you bring to the table? What are you good at that we are going to value in a grid down situation? And this applies, you know, to me too. You know, what do I bring to the table um, <clears throat> for a grouper or something like that? Um, it applies today, right? I saw a, a good video uh, by Elder Doug Becker at Straightway. And uh, he was talking about people who just say, I'm just coming to Straightway. We've had that at Shofar Mountain. I'm just going to join Shofar Mountain. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> you know, why should we accept you? Why should we let you in? And that's today, right? And... What is valuable as far as bringing to the table will vary greatly by the situation. You know, I tell people all the time, get out of the cities, flee Babylon, get out into the country now, meet your neighbors now, make friends with your neighbors now, because once it happens, um, people aren't going to want a whole lot of outsiders coming in. Right now, it's hard enough to, to ease your way into society out there in the countryside if you're not from there. Um, given hard times, uh, they're going to look at people, newcomers, uh, with a different eye, right? And so you got to do this early. Um, today, one could probably join a survivalist group, a MAG, um, you know, whatever, call it what you want, it doesn't really matter, um, by having a lot of money. I mean, many groups would take them, you know, you could be some, I'm just going to use real words here, okay? You could be fat, out of shape, sleeping on a sleep apnea machine because you're 200 pounds overweight um, <clears throat> and, you know, type 2 diabetes. And a group would take you now um, because you bring a lot of money to the table. And then they would use that money to buy supplies and they would say, you know what, when this whole thing kicks off, Bob might not make it anyway, but, you know, we can buy a new whatever, you know, with the $100,000 he brought to the team. Um, but poof, once the balloon goes up, that money ain't going to matter, right? It's just not going to matter. No one's going to care about your money. Um, and what they're going to look at is, do we want to feed these people? What if you're married and have three kids, right? Do they want to feed you, your wife, and your three kids? You're going to have to be really valuable because most groups um, aren't going to be set up and running on the garden, you know, that they just have an abundance of extra food and all they really need is people to go out there and pick beans and they'll be good. Most people aren't going to be like that. Shofar Mountain has been operating now. We're into our third year and uh, we're still not self-sufficient you know, in our gardens and stuff. We're working on it hard, but we're not there. We're, produce, we're not even self-sufficient, let alone producing abundance, right? And so people who come to Shofar Mountain have to now have a means to provide for themselves food because I can't feed them, right? You know, Pastor Joe is not made out of money. And so you've got to come with at least that. Well, given a grid down situation, um, you know, they're looking at you going, wow, you've got to be really valuable for me to take rice and beans out of the mouth of my daughter, off my daughter's plate, and give them to you or your daughter, right? Um, and so what do you bring to the table? You know, and, and really look at that. And when you look at what do you bring to the table, look at your liabilities, right? What are your pros? What are your cons? Um, are you extremely overweight? Somebody's going to look at you and go, you know, they're not even going to be able to work in the garden. They're not even going to be able to carry firewood, right? So what good are they? Um, well, I know all about this. Let's just say you know all about engineering and, you know, you could design a great solar system or a water ram pump or, you know, whatever, something. Okay, cool. Um, do you have the stuff to work your trade? <laughs> You know, because we don't have any solar panels sitting around. Um, so did you bring some solar panels that you know how to hook up and get us rigged up? You know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, they talk about barter materials, right? Barter materials, the best barter materials are skills if you have the stuff around you to use your skills. In other words, if you're a dentist, uh, having a dental kit would probably be a good thing, right? Remember when doctors used to carry, no, you don't, because <laughs> you're older than me, they used to carry little black doctor's bags for house visits and they had kind of everything they needed in it to do a house visit, something like that. Paramedics, you know, paramedics are uh, valuable people because most paramedics have, you know, a kit or two at home, you know, big paramedic kit, and they are just chock full of skills that they have. They would be a valuable addition to your group and they're probably coming with some gear, right? Um, that's a good skill set to have. Um, 
a lot of survivalists uh, fashion themselves as, you know, well, I'll go and be in charge of security or I'll be a security guy because I've got all my attack gear and, and my gun and, you know, I shoot at the range two Fridays a month. Dude, <laughs> the security guys are a dime a dozen. Um, and you know what? There's better guys than you. <laughs> <laughs> to pick from, <laughs> you know, um, so that's probably not a skill set that you want to rank real high uh, on your little inventory, you know, that I've got an AR-15 and can do this, well, great, you know, we got eight of them, now what, um, why am I going to feed you, and so start thinking about those things, um, the second thing then to do, after you've looked at your pros and your cons and what you bring to the table, is start working on your cons, you know, get rid of them if you can. You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you. One of my cons, if I were to go try and join a group right now, is that I'm older, right? You know, I'm 52. You know, that, hey, it's like, dude, you're 52, man. Nah, eh, I don't know. Um, so you have to compensate for that in other ways. You have to bring something else to the table that outweighs uh, that. Um, but some things you can work on. You know, I can't work on my age. Um, but some things you can work on. If you are out of shape, get in shape. You know, people who are in shape are, are more useful. I mean, they are. <laughs> There's a reason, you know. Um, you can work harder. Um, learn some skills. There's all kinds of valuable skills. I'm not going to go through that right now in this video, but there's all kinds of really valuable skills you can learn now. Um, and when I say learn, I don't just mean read a book on it. You're going to actually have to practice and do these things so that you actually own the skill. Uh, probably another video for another time. Um, and so that's the second hard thing to do. You know, the first thing is actually look at yourself and do a real self-assessment. And then the second hard thing to do is actually start taking steps to improve yourself. Um, you know, just example, Shofar Mountain, we tell people, hey, just, you know, the base entry level to, to be able to move to Shofar Mountain, number one, you have to be a Hebrew Israelite, you know, I could help you with that, but, you know, psh, that, that's non-negotiable. The other uh, non-negotiable is you have to bring a year's worth of food for you and your family, um, and we have to say, yes, that's a year's worth of food. These are non-negotiable because, again, I can't feed you. Other teams have other uh, rules, you know, I've been on a couple survival teams, and we all had rules. Most of those rules did include food. You know, you had to come to the table with X amount of food. Um, I would guess that most groups out there are going to have a similar rule. Um, and so for today, uh, start putting up food. You know, I have lots of videos on how to put up buckets of food cheaply, inexpensively. There's many videos online, rice, beans, wheat, and corn, you know, just do buckets of it. And if you tell somebody, hey, I'd like to join, and oh, by the way, I have 12 buckets of food for each member of my family, you know, that's a big plus, right? So start working on that, but don't do the American thing because I just slipped into it myself and focus on stuff. Right? Stuff can go away. It can rust. The moths can eat it. You know, <laughs> It can burn up in a fire. Um, focus on you. What do you bring to the table? All right. I'll see you out there.